To this point, I've presented a working definition of organizations and explained just how common they are. Now I want to sell you on the course. Learning about organizations, reflecting on how they operate, and considering a variety of means by which they can be managed is an important skill most everyone in today's society should develop. We live in an organizational society, and many of the problems we confront are organizational in nature. We need to better understand and manage organizations if we are to evolve as a society. This course attempts to provide you with such training. It's an introductory course on organizations that helps you grapple with the complexity of institutional life. The course focuses on actual cases of nonprofits, educational institutions, government agencies, private firms, and the policies aimed at changing them. The course material is designed for advanced undergraduates, master's students, and PhDs interested in organizations. So, let's cut to the chase. What's the utility of this course to managers, policymakers, and analysts? Why should you care? Again, organizations are everywhere. You can't change society or understand much of it without knowing something about organizations and how they work. The social reality of organizational life is pretty messy and complex, and we need a conceptual framework or a set of them to help us make sense of it. For example, what should you pay attention to? What matters, what does not, when you look at an organization and the reforms or the problems it confronts? Where do you begin if you want to study and change them? This course offers you conceptual frameworks and tools by which to do this. Through this course, you'll better understand the problems that organizations like schools, universities, nonprofits, and private firms confront. There are so many problems that arise in an organization that it's hard to rattle them all off. But here, we can name a few. First, organizations confront problems of defining objectives, like goals. It's not always clear what their mission is, or if they have conflicting ones. Organizations struggle to get people to show up and to perform services like tasks. Uh, students in required classes are difficult to show up. Third, organizations worry about the coordination of lots of people trying to accomplish these tasks and even how to coordinate different tasks with one another. Here the problem is how to have uh, upstream and downstream kinds of activities coordinated or even how to accomplish each task on their own. There's always a concern of drawing necessary resources from the environment. This could be a fifth kind of concern. Organizational inputs like money or revenue, materials, knowledge, are highly important for the functioning of an organization. Then organizations also have to worry about their outputs, dispensing ideas, products, and funds to the environment and making sure that the environment reacts to them. There's also the concern with selecting, training, and replacing members as participants move through these organizations. Participants in organizations grow old, they graduate, they die. Uh, people turn over, they find other jobs. Replacing them is a key function or concern of every organization. Organizations even worry about the relations they have with other firms, like ties to neighbors and, and fit with an environment. For example, Walmart can't just plop down in any particular neighborhood. They have to consider the environment and their fit. This course exposes you to a variety of actual cases of organizations and theories that help make sense of what you've observed. Through this course, you'll learn there's nothing more practical than a good theory. Many of you have organizational experiences of your own, and they'll be of great value in this course. Think of them as experiences from which you'll, you've developed different accounts or interpretations. In most cases, your accounts focus on certain features of the organizational context. You attribute causal force to certain elements and certain actors over others, and you come to certain conclusions as to why things happened the way they did. Your accounts are in many ways a folk theory, a proto-theory. But as we all know, people have different accounts of the same phenomenon, and the same explanation or way of seeing organized life cannot be universally applied. In many regards, it's not enough to adopt one theory or one perspective on everything. In whatever career you pick, you will confront new problems and new situations where your previously generated explanation does not apply or where another uh, perspective is altogether needed and relevant. This course exposes you to multiple theories of explaining and managing organizations. Why? 
Well, it, it does so to help you develop different accounts than you already have, to help you think in new ways about organizations so that when you go out and study one or manage one, you don't just draw on rules of thumb that will likely never work in a particular case, but adopt different ways of seeing and thinking about the phenomena. So this course provides you with different perspectives you may not have considered before. When you look at an organization now, it may seem unbearably complex and composed of an endless array of features. Through theories, or organizational theories, you'll learn to listen for different kinds of music and all that noise. Each theory picks up on different features of organized life and renders them into explanatory na narratives you can use. And by implication, the hope is that you'll learn different and perhaps better ways of managing than you already have in your possession. So this course is designed to enrich your understanding of organizational phenomena and your experiences in them. You won't be given a laundry list of advice or rules of thumb that soon go out of date or fail to apply in the novel situations you confront. There are no sil silver bullet solutions here. You'll be given a set of tools, ways of seeing, ways of understanding, and ways of managing the complex reality of organizations. I'll leave it up to you and the actual organization cases that interest you to discern which tool or combination of them best applies.